Hi, this is Jules with Haverford Township Free Library, and today we're going to be talking about noses and ears. Uh, noses and ears have something in common. They're the least active parts of the face, I would say. Uh, eyes and mouths are the ones that move around and create expression and such, but noses and ears aren't really part of that. But just because they aren't really as active on your figure that you're drawing doesn't mean they aren't fun or interesting or important to your figure. They can be really fun once you really learn how to create their structure. So let's start with noses. People often have trouble drawing noses. Uh, one of the reasons noses are hard to draw is because as soon as you put them on the face that you're drawing, it, uh, it defines the angle of the head. The nose is the, one of the main things that define the drawing as being from a certain angle. Uh, it tells the viewer what angle the head is being seen from. For something that doesn't really move, like the eyes and mouth move, um, for something that doesn't move, the nose can be pretty difficult to draw. But try to embrace the nose. Every nose is different, like uh, snowflakes, I guess. Um, and they can be really fun. So there are different tutorials that say the nose is a triangle, but that's not really true in most cases. Most people's noses aren't really triangular. Thinking of noses in this way can be okay when starting out drawing them, but it's pretty limiting. Um, my nose isn't triangle shaped. Most people's noses aren't really triangular. Uh, so uh, like this person says in this tutorial here, it severely limits your options to just think of them as triangles. Uh, it can be useful to an extent though. I'm not sure exactly whose tutorial this is on this page, but if you happen to know, please let me know so I can credit them. Um, this person gives examples of all of the different shapes that can go into drawing noses. This tutorial here is from Grizz and Norm, as it says on that watermark there. Uh, noses can seem like an afterthought because, as I said before, they're not really actors on the face. Um, they're more structural. If you were drawing kind of in a, a cartoony way, you could pretty much put any shape at all between the eyes and mouth and the viewer will still recognize it and register it as a nose. Um, so in that way you can get creative, but it, again, it's still a good idea to draw real life noses uh, in a realistic way before getting too cartoony with it. This tutorial mentions how the, how the nose is really the key to drawing the face from different angles. The nose can hide the eye from different angles, which is one of the reasons they are difficult because you're like, where am I supposed to put this eye on the other side of the nose? So it is a lot of work trying to visualize it. As the tutorial says here, it's a good idea to keep um, general nose structure in mind even while you get creative. Here we see part of the nose is bone uh, in the back and the, the front part of the nose is cartilage, which is more pliable than bone. Um, the cartilage part barely moves, but it, it can move a little bit in extreme expressions, as you can see there. The Etherington brothers um, here mentioned that from the front, you can think of the nose as being an M shape along the bottom of it and two lowercase h's to be the sides of the nose. This is a good basic idea. Uh, and remember, you can vary the M and h's as much as you want, but from the front, the nose will have that general shape to it. From the side, the nose will be anywhere between an L and a U, depending on how prominent the bridge of the nose is. And as I said before, more than any other feature on the face, uh, you can vary the nose to almost beyond recognition and it can still register in the viewer's eyes as, as a nose. This is fun because then you can have endless possibilities. Here we see a basic head um, and just changing the nose makes the, the heads all seem like they're different characters. The other intents point out that there are three parts of the nose that you can switch up. Uh, there's the dorsal or bridge part, uh, the tip, and the nostril. So you can change each one up and make a completely different nose. Here are more variations on noses, showing different parts being altered. The other ten brothers make sure to note that when you are drawing a nose from an angle, like not just straight ahead or in profile, that's when it's the most important to think in 3D and consider the volume and, and the 3D shape of the nose. Uh, and if you're, if you're a cartoonist or an animator, drawing the nose from kind of an angle, like having the head be like sort of a three quarters um, position is one of the main ways you draw your character. So it is important to consider how the nose looks in a 3D way. So that's just kind of a general introduction to noses, and here's an introduction to ears. Ears. If you're Fred Flintstone, it's easy to draw ears because they're just lumps on the side of your head. Uh, but for everyone else, um, the ear is an odd little puzzle to draw. Most tutorials suggest thinking of the ears as a combination of a question mark or a hook and a Y shape. And also note that the ear is slightly tipped from the head uh, at, at an angle most of the time. They aren't really just usually straight up and down off the side of the head. Ears are weird in like the structure and everything, but they also become difficult 
when you are drawing a head tipped up or tipped down because then you have to think about where the ears will be placed on the side of the head and you have to think about the placement of the jawline and everything because when the head tips up as you see there the ears kind of look like they're further down uh, when the heads tip down the ears kind of look like they're further up so the Etherington brothers also say that the ear is a question mark and why but they also mention the important uh, little bump there on the ear don't forget to draw that little bump um, here's a diagram of the different parts of the ear separately. This diagram is kind of cool because then you can, it, it allows you to think of the different parts of the ear separately. This makes it so you can exaggerate or simplify different parts of the ear to add characterization to the ear. Uh, from behind, the ear is like a little bowl sticking out from the head, as you can see here. This is helpful uh, if you do comics and stuff because you might want to draw some like over the shoulder shots if two characters are having a conversation or something. As I said earlier, ears are a good indication for showing the, the angle of the head. Uh, I like these drawings because they can help you see how the ear is going to look on the skull from different angles. And here's a final tutorial that focuses on the different parts of the ear and then it like hints to the different ways you could make the ears uh, for a fantasy drawing if that's what you like to do. So um, ears and noses can often be difficult for people. Like I said last week with hands, hands are difficult too. Um, Whatever it is that you least want to draw, that's kind of an indication that that's what you need to work on the most and always draw it. Some artists, when they're drawing a figure, they always draw them with their hands behind their backs um, because, you know, they can't draw hands and so they hide the hands behind the character's back. Don't give in to that. Draw the hands. Um, it's, of course, difficult for you. If that's what's difficult for you, that's the thing that you have to draw. If you have to trace some hands on a separate paper, trace out the different parts of the hand so you can think of it in different pieces, then draw the hands on a different paper till you get them right, then draw it on your picture if you don't want to ruin your picture. Um, if you find ears the most difficult or noses or something, do the same kind of thing. If you usually don't draw ears and you hide them under the person's hair or something or under a hat, that means that that's the thing you need to practice. If you always draw just like the tops of people and not their legs, which is what I always did, learn to draw the legs and the feet. Learn to draw the whole figure. Don't just draw part of the figure. Even if it's not going to be your best drawing ever, finish finish the drawing. Um, make yourself draw the whole figure. Uh, that's the way you improve. I have to try even if it's hard because that, that's how I learn. Not just to get better, but to learn to surprise myself with what I can do. So that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed these tutorials on noses and ears. And good luck with all your drawings. Bye!